Our next speaker is uh, Lady Afshar, Professor Afshar, Halea Afshar. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm sorry that I'm a bit of a yo-yo and I'm going up and down with the vote, but I'm trying to protect 12-year-old children from buying cigarettes, so I think it's a worthy cause. Um, I'm going to be very brief because I have to disappear again, but I'd like to make three points. First of all, I think that we met uh, because I was standing up in the House of Lords to say that uh, women's, that carers' work had to be paid work. And I'm one of those anti constructed feminists who think that. But I think that because I'm a Muslim. And for 14 centuries, Muslim women have been entitled to wages for housework. So it was yeah. nothing new for me. <laughs> I knew a lot of Muslim men have forgotten it and they don't like to be reminded. But essentially, <laughs> to me, I grew up with a clear understanding that if you worked at home, you had to be paid for it. And this included a Quranic text that says if you suckle your baby, that is to say, uh, giving, you know, suckling your baby is a choice, and I must say, as my daughter faced the kind of uh, mother's milk mafia, I thought, I wish they realised that she had the choice not to do it, but anyway, uh, but, but also that if you do it, you have to be paid. So for me, there's never been any question that housework is paid work, and it absolutely amazes me that it's taken 20 centuries for Western women to get there, yes. and once they've got there, they don't exercise that right. So that's, that's my, my first position. Mm -hmm. I might say that actually, I was very glad that finally grandparents got the right to get paid for care, because um, I, was, I, was, I was a Harriet Harman type of woman. I, did, I actually wasn't very good at childcare, I have to say. But I'm very, happy, very lucky, I'm married to a man who's wonderful at it, who looked after my children as well as having an academic career, which is the kind of career you can combine with childcare, and also is currently looking after my granddaughter um, <coughs> with the same kind of agenda. So I'm very pleased that finally grandparents' work is recognised. My hope is, and, and, and I actually I have raised the question with um, Vera Beard, Vera Beard who's, who's piloting the Equality Bill. Uh, I, in a meeting, I asked her whether she recognised caring for children as employment and those that were employed in caring for children should not be discriminated against. And she agreed that that was the case. I have now written to the leader of the House of Lords to say, why is it that the Equality Bill recognises caring as work well? <coughs> and actually recognises that you should not discriminate against old age and we've just had a bill across the, the, the house which allows employers to sack you at, you know, at 65, and I'm really worried about that because I'm heading that way very immediately. And also, that, that you recognize mothers or carers and caring as work, but yet you actually, before your equality bill comes through, you're outlawing it. And I'm speaking about this next week in the House of Lords. There are a lot of us who have cared for children, either directly or indirectly. Uh, and I come from a society where the entire tribe looks after your children. So our poor son in law is absolutely shocked at the fact that we own the children. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> the, the children belong to the family. Uh, but my hope is that because of these glaring contradictions between what the government says it wants to achieve, which is equality for women, for carers, for old people, and what did this bill provide? That we might be able to wedge in some kind of uh, commitment to change, change tack. Now, I, I'm very new to this job, but I do realize that changing government is worse than trying to redirect a tanker. But I also think it's not impossible. So wish me luck. I'll do my best, and I have to go. <laughs>